In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create and code a DAP from start to finish. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtabs and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be coding a DAP from start to finish, but you will need to watch this full stack web three developer environment setup first. The reason is this video will give you the starting grounds to work from. It will show you how to set up a proper Web3 development environment. And that is exactly the environment that we will be using coding the DAP from. This will be a four part series. So in the first part, this video, we will be looking at how to write the smart contract for our DAP. Before we start off with the first part and I show you what DAP we're going to build, Please keep in mind, if you ever get stuck in any of my videos, go to this website, hashups.online, go to the Discord channel or any other links and ask around. In the Discord, there are thousands of devs that's willing to help. Also, don't forget to fill out the Hashups Artist List 2022. This year, we are going to be supporting artists in their endeavors and helping them to become a blockchain artist. So go ahead and fill this out as well as for people who want to participate in the hackathon coming up this year as well. I will leave links to both of these lists in the description of this video. Let's get started. So this is the DAP that we are going to be building. It is a task management DAP, kind of like a Kanban board. Now we have our tickets here in the to do column. We can create a new one. So let's create a test ticket. Each action will have a kind of MetaMask pop-up because we need to interact with the blockchain. Here it is. We can move it to the busy column and so on. We can also rename. There we go. We can move a ticket. We can also give one a new name. Let's make this one test as well. And each one will have an action communicating this to the blockchain. There we go. Now, this whole DAP we're going to be building and the purpose behind it is to get you used to writing Solidity code testing your code and hooking it up to a front end. So this will teach you the basics to write any DAP out there. Let's get going. Okay, so this is the base project structure. Like I said, watch this video if you want to see how to set this all up. We also need to make sure that on MetaMask, we are connected to our local host. Then we can also just make sure that we have an account that is linked with test ether. When we go back to Visual Studio Code, here at the bottom of the terminal, let's CD into our DAP, like so. Because we will need to be in the root directory to execute these uh, commands. So next, what we're going to do is in the contracts folder, we're going to create a new file, and that's gonna be the manager.sol. We are also gonna go into this greeter uh, file that we have and just copy over these two lines. This is very important and the top license I'm going to turn into MIT. Let me explain what these do. Always remember to save your files frequently. I'm pressing command S to do so. By the way, the top line over here just explains to us the license that this code falls under. MIT is usually associated with free open source code that you can use. Then on line three, this statement over here simply tells us what compiler is going to be used to compile this code. It is important because different versions in Solidity have breaking changes. And that's why this is important to say that in this moment in time, I would like only compilers 8, uh, 0 0.8 and above to compile this code. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and delete this greeter.sol. We don't need it and we don't want to clutter our DAP or our project setup with unnecessary contracts or code. So removing that is good. The next thing that we'll need to do is actually define the contract. Let's go ahead and start a base contract. You start off with the contract keyword, then the name of the contract, which is usually the same as the file name, and then open and close your curly braces. In Solidity, we get various data types that we can use, but we can also create our own. And we can do this by using a struct. Now we can create a maybe a ticket struct. So start it off like this 
and then we can define what parameters or what values our struct should have. For instance, I think it should have a uint 8, which is going to be very small values, of a status. Now, once we have that, we can also add maybe our string, and we're going to call this our name. And there we have it, a fully set up own custom data type called a ticket. Our manager is going to make use of tickets to keep track of where they are, their names and their status. So we most probably need some kind of ticket list, an array. So what we can do is use our new type, make it a type of array, so an array of tickets. Then we're also going to make this variable public and we're going to give it the uh, tickets variable name. So what this says to us is that we have a list of tickets and the variable is tickets. So there is an example of how you can use your own data type in a list. Our contract will facilitate the creation of tickets. So we'll need a function for that. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're not going to have access management. So anyone will be able to create a ticket, but let's just go ahead and create this. So we're going to create a function and we're going to call it create ticket. Then we can make this function public if we want to, if we want anyone to be able to call it such as the outside or the contract itself. But if we make it external, then we can only call this function from the outside, which is all we need. Then for the signature, we're going to add a string. We're going to say the string is of a memory type that we're going to pass in. And it's actually just going to be the name. We want the person or the individual creating the ticket to facilitate us with a name that we can go ahead and create a new ticket. Now, what should our function do? Well, firstly, we need to push to the tickets array a ticket. So how we can do that is by calling the push method like so. This push method will only be able to take in a type of ticket. This one here that we defined. So in order to instantiate a new ticket, this is how you do it. You can just specify the name of what we want to create like so and pass in the two variables. Now, what are the two variables that we need? Well, for a ticket, we need a status and a name. Let's just assume that we are going to be using integers for our status. So zero will be to do, one will be busy, and then two will be done. So to start off a ticket, we're going to pass it in zero, then comma, followed by the name, like so. Once we have done this, this is all we'll need to push a new ticket after calling this function to our ticket list. Now that we can store the tickets, let's create a new function. This function we'll use to update the ticket name, like so. And we're going to give it a signature of a uint. And this time we're going to say the index because we'll need to know which index to update the name. And then again, we may be going to need the string memory and the new name like so. This is also going to be external. And uh, the only thing that we'll need to do is find the index and update the name. What we can do is grab our tickets array, then point to the index and then exactly point to the name variable. This we're going to set equal to our new name that was passed in. We can do the exact same thing for the update status. So what we can do is instead of uh, rewriting everything, we can just say status. And instead of name over here, let's change that into status as well. And here, and remember to point to the status variable that we would like to update. Now we can't leave this signature because it needs to be a uint eight. And the reason is because our struct requires the status to be a uint eight data type. So our contract is now basically complete, but what we need is maybe one more function that will return to us all the tickets. So let's make a function and call this get tickets it's going to be external. It's also going to be view. And this one's going to return to us a list of tickets. And we're going to use the memory data type like so. 
we're going to say return to us the tickets and there we have it this will return to us a tuple basically the whole list of tickets that we have now that we have our fully completed solidity contract let's go and set up the deploy script so we can actually deploy our code to a blockchain that we're going to be hosting just now you can open the deploy.js file in the scripts directory and this is the code from before in the setup video. The first thing that we'll need to change is this greeter over here to manager. We're also going to do it there, here, and here as well. Once we have this, going to await for it. So to just basically replace the greeter with the manager contract uh, everywhere. So it can just work smoothly. We don't need to pass in a variable a constructor argument over here so you can take that out as well let's deploy the contract and see if we've done everything successful what we'll need to do first is go to the hardat.config.js and if you have this rinkaby section in here just make sure you remove it for now because we're only going to be using the hardhat local node once you've done that save the file then in the terminal go ahead and open a new terminal cd into the dap and then what we need to run is npx hard at clean this will make sure that we clean hard axe configuration just to make sure everything is still fine and then we're going to run npx hard at node this will give us a blockchain uh, with keys that we can use i think it's good for us to maybe copy one of these private keys and import it into metamask at this stage so copy this and then head over to your favorite browser. Go into MetaMask and what we'll need to do is say import account, paste the private key and here it says account you're trying to import is a duplicate. Okay, and that's because I already have it in here, I guess. Um, well, let me remove this account and let's just do it again. So import account, there we go. So just make sure that you have this set up on MetaMask as well. It is just good so that we can interact with the contract later on. But now we have our node running and we can actually go back to our previous terminal. So leave the node terminal running so the blockchain is active. And then inside here, we can deploy our code. In the terminal, in the root directory, run this command. npx hard at run, and then specifying the network as localhost, and then we are going to point to this deployer script. Once you press enter, it will go ahead and deploy our contract. And there we go. It says that greeter is not defined at line 22. So here we go, greeter.manager, and that is correct. Um, here we need to actually take this out and specify the manager.address. And that's how we fix bugs. So go ahead, press up arrow if you want to run this again, and just press enter. Everyone was probably screaming at me saying that was wrong. Anyway, we fixed it. So there's our new contract. Something worth mentioning is that if you have made changes to your contract, you should always run npx hard hat compile first before you deploy it. And that is kind of the flow that you should follow. But there's something even more important before you do these two steps. And that is to test your code. We should write tests to make sure that everything works as it seems before we deploy code that's uh, immutable on the blockchain. And that's what we'll be doing in the next part of this video series. So see you in part two. Don't forget to leave me a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. See you in part two. Cheers for now.